The question is, for a new MLA like I am, is how do you be an MLA? And one of the jobs of a member of the legislature is to be a representative of the people in uh, his or her riding. So it means it's important to be in touch on a regular basis with uh, people in the riding and that's why I'm having regular neighborhood meetings uh, to do just that. That way uh, I know what's on the mind of uh, my constituents and uh, they can hear what's going on at the legislature and give some feedback. Also I need to think about how to be an MLA for, for young people uh, and so I'll be looking at how to be in the schools and how to be on campus uh, as their MLA because their voices are really important need to be heard too. The first neighborhood meeting was here in Skyline Acres and uh, it was a special one in a sense because we really had a project focus um, and the idea came out of the great gathering in Fredericton which was uh, how do we build community, how do we build some focal point in uh, our neighborhoods around the city, recognizing that in many neighborhoods that, that doesn't really exist in a, in a major way. So uh, I uh, was successful in uh, applying to have three social work students uh, as interns to do their social action placement with me as MLA in Fredericton South here. My name is Jess McCauley. I'm Adrienne Kasdan. And Samantha Silver. And so uh, they began the process of looking at what kind of assets there are in the neighborhood. Scott, Skyline Acres, Forest Hill, meeting with the principals, the ministers at the churches, the uh, folks over at the fire hall, uh, the staff at the Boys and Girls Club, and, and so on. We drove around the neighborhood, the Skyline Acres neighborhood. We had to define the boundaries of the neighborhood, which is a little bit different or difficult because um, you know one neighborhood doesn't exactly end where the next begins. But uh, we drove around all the streets and just took a look at what we thought the assets already were. So uh, we got to know um, where the different organizations were, where are the schools, where are all the parks, where are the trails, do they have pools, do they have lots of trees, what kind of housing is there, is it apartments, is it uh, subsidized housing, is it single family homes. Um, so first we, we just tried to get a sense of um, what the fabric of that neighborhood was. We mapped it all out on a real map. <laughs> and then we started uh, just dropping in to all the places that we thought might have contact people who would be maybe community leaders. So in dropping in, we would introduce ourselves and say that we're working on you know, a community building project with David. And we started scheduling interviews so that we could meet with all of these community leaders again and find out what programs and services they offer, what they know about the neighborhood what kind of sense of community they feel. And then uh, the Boys and Girls Club offered uh, the building, the hall there, as a venue for a neighborhood meeting. So, uh, so the students uh, put together a flyer and delivered the flyer to all the mailboxes in the neighborhood, inviting people to uh, our first, uh, my first neighborhood meeting. because I mean normally when you plan an event I think um, you might already know the group who you're bringing together you might have some means of calculating your potential numbers and we really had no idea we put out uh, just under 2,000 flyers and we had absolutely no way of estimating how many people would come um, and of course the Boys and Girls Club which is the venue we used had a, a maximum capacity so we were kind of <laughs> worried we had no idea oh my goodness are we gonna go over maximum capacity is, is nobody gonna, gonna show up, up? Yeah. we had 
probably about 10 tables set up and we had uh, about six to eight people sitting at one table together. And um, at those tables they had lots of markers and paper and lots of stuff that they could doodle and write down their, um, their like brainstorming ideas. Dennis was the facilitator. So he has a lot of experience, uh, which was just amazing because he brings an energy to what he does. Can we all form a circle in the space that's involved here and we'll begin. So communities have met in a circle for a long time, but for some of us this might be a bit of a new exercise, especially connecting into the political process as it connects to city council and to the provincial legislature. So how exciting do you think that ideas that you generate today amongst your cumulative, cumulative, cumulative heart power and brain power through a world cafe will make its way to city council chambers and make its way to the floor of the legislature. So that's awesome and I wanted to make sure you noted that. Community self-organization, community conversation, turning into change for what you want for your community. And we do that together in a circle. But to start this part of the heart of this whole thing, take a moment and think of a word, a movement, <laughs> or a song title that reflects how you feel right now. And we're going to go around and everybody just a quick <laughs> A word, a movement, <laughs> or a song type. Anticipation. reveal the first question, they would answer the first question in small groups, and then we would go into what we called the popcorn session. And so after about 15 minutes of the small group activity, um, one representative from each of the tables would share the ideas um, to the larger group. So people feel that this is a safe neighborhood? And for the community. Dog friendly. Uh, is somewhat self-sufficient? Walking paths. We have a few stores. Established, mature uh, neighborhood. Um, it's quite walk. And then they would go and uh, take their written ideas, their sheet of written ideas, and so, so a, like attach it to the question that was up on the wall. So it was like a physical and visual uh, thing. So they, it was up. We kind of made a mural of the questions and uh, all the answers that everybody gave, um, all kind of pasted onto it. So after that session, one person at each table would stay at the table and everyone else would at random get up and go sit elsewhere so that during the three rounds, um, everyone was working in a different small group and that way people can make more little connections with each other. Three questions. So the first question was, 
what is great about living in the Skyline Acres neighborhood. So we wanted to focus like first on a strength, like what's already existing here and what's working well, what do people love about the neighborhood? Um, and the ideas just came and came. And then the second question um, focused on, I guess, like areas of growth. So what would you like to see change in the neighborhood in four years or happen or some, uh, something yeah, along those lines? Yeah, it was what could make it better. What could make mm -hmm. it better in the next four years. So again, a positive. Yeah, a positive way of wording that question. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that, like, for the areas of growth, like, it was really great to hear that because we knew there were going to be needs. But this type of event, or I guess this type of activity, it kind of brings it in, like, for aspirations for people. So it comes, it, it's really positive. So people like what they mm -hmm. want to see. So it's not, I guess, it stays away from that negativity or people complaining all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's still the exact it's same. It's productive, and it's the exact same things that would come mm. out of any other meeting that was more of a needs-based. Yeah. And then the third question was, um, how can we make this happen? So it's more of an action question, and that was the one that kind of stemmed ideas about people mm -hmm. creating a residence association or potlucks, barbecues. It was great just to see people eating and mingling and some people like you were just meeting for the first time but you were having mm -hmm. great conversation and um, there was a guy going around with a petition and asking people to sign it so mm -hmm. um, seeing those relationships start to grow and develop was really really quite great. At the very end just the feeling was that um, I think it had to do with the wording of the questions being so positive and bringing up all these strengths there's just this feeling of positivity that everybody had created or been participated in a creative process rather than a kind of combative. We often think of political processes as being combative and hierarchical, but this was an, a really uh, creative and very positive process. So that was my favorite. It was just a sense at the end. Um, it wasn't like a concrete moment, but uh, we had many participants say to us, oh, that was so positive. Like with a kind of surprise in their voices, so. There was like the two themes that were brought forth were like community building types of events and then social action, social political and like wider issues and organizing for action around that. I really hope to see these uh, meetings continue over time because it really is the true democratic process and we should be getting involved and um, participating in it like this so that we can all work together to bring, well, make our communities better and mm -hmm. more connected. So that's the thinking about uh, uh, the beginning of how to become uh, an MLA and carry out my responsibility as a representative um, of the constituents to represent uh, the constituents in the Legislative Assembly. There, of course, are two other important functions. One is as a lawmaker or a legislator, uh, working on laws, on bills in the legislature. And then, of course, as a, a watchdog, that is to, to uh, kind of examine and, and be a watchdog over how public money is spent uh, by the government of the day. So those are the three major parts of an MLA's job. And uh, certainly one of the most enjoyable so far is meeting with uh, uh, the constituents in the neighborhood talking about uh, what they love about the, their community and how we can improve it and how we might go about doing that.